Thomas Jefferson Biography Thomas Jefferson belongs among the founding fathers of the United States. One of the authors of the Declaration of Independence, he became the third president of the country. And today the name of the politician is on the rumor. He is counted among the innovators who tried to carry out radical transformations in the country. The principles enunciated by this statesman are still listened to today, and his statements have long become winged. Childhood and Youth the biography of the future politician began in the city of Shadwell in Virginia, which at that time was part of the British colonies in North America. He was born on April 13, 1743, in the family of influential planters. The ancestors of the father, Peter Jefferson, were natives of the English county of Wales. His mother, Jane Randolph, was closely related to the first president of the Continental Congress. Two years after Thomas's birth, the family moved to the Tuckahoe estate, which was left after the death of the owner, Colonel William Randolph. At the age of nine, Jefferson began his studies at the parochial school of William Douglas, where the basics of Latin, ancient Greek, and French were taught. After six years, the boy was placed for two years in an institution run by priest James Morey. Since by this time Thomas's father had already died a year ago, the teenager was temporarily placed in the house of Morey. During his studies, he gained the necessary knowledge of the exact sciences. In 1760, Thomas became a student at the Williamsburg College of William and Mary, where he chose to study a course in philosophy, mathematics, and law. The instructor, Professor William Small, introduced the young man to the works of eminent scientists, Isaac Newton, John Locke, and Francis Bacon, three geniuses who influenced the formation of the worldview and political views of the future statesman. Young Jefferson highly valued the works of ancient philosophers and playwrights for the sake of reading which he thoroughly studied, ancient Greek grammar. In addition to basic subjects, Thomas mastered playing the violin. Free from lectures and seminars, the young man spent time in the company of fellow students, attending events of the Secret Student Society, Flat Hat Club, or Balls, which were organized in the mansion of the governor of Virginia, Francis Fouquier. This did not prevent Thomas from completing his studies with top marks. Five years the young man spent on mastering the law under the guidance of George Witt, after which he began to work independently as a lawyer. Politics After two years of legal activity in 1769, Jefferson was elected a member of the Legislative Chamber of Virginia. In 1774, after the signing of restrictive acts of the Parliament of Great Britain in relation to the colonies in the West, Thomas issued a message to his fellow citizens, General Review of the Rights of British America, in which he expressed the intention of the colonies to introduce self-government. Jefferson boldly criticized the activities of the English Parliament, then aroused sympathy among the people. Even before the outbreak of the War of Independence in the winter of 1775, Thomas became a member of the Continental Congress. Then the views of the politician who played an important role in the founding and formation of American statehood primarily in winning independence for the North American colonies and creating the principles of the new political system were formed. Other founding fathers of the United States were John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Alexander Hamilton, and others. Declaration of Independence In two years, the Declaration of Independence was prepared. The date of its adoption, July 4, 1776, became the official date of birth of the American nation. The document was created by five authors, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Roger Sherman, and Robert Livingston. In the final stage, the declaration was finalized for 17 days by one man, Jefferson, before being signed by the remaining authors and representatives of the 13 administrative entities. The document began by declaring the equality of men among themselves and three inalienable rights life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It further enshrined the sovereignty of the colonies and the policy of non-interference of Great Britain in the life of the states. Jefferson implemented his own political ideas, in addition to their realization in the form of the main document of the United States, in his native Virginia, where he was elected governor in 1779. In 1781-1782, he worked on the work Notes on the State of Virginia, published after the end of military operations. Since 1785, the politician became ambassador of the young state in France, 
but continued to conduct legislative processes in the United States. By correspondence, he corrected James Madison, one of the authors of the Constitution of 1783 and the Bill of Rights. Returning five years later to his homeland, Jefferson received the post of the first U.S. Secretary of State and joined the ranks of the Democratic Republican Party. Political views Jefferson criticized the first drafts of the U.S. Constitution, which did not limit the number of terms of election of one person to the post of president of the country, making the ruler essentially an unlimited monarch. The politician saw the prerequisites for the impoverishment of the people and the growth of large-scale industrial production. He expressed confidence that the basis of a strong economy is a society of free private farms. Hamilton, for example, envisioned the future of the nation depending solely on its wealthy representatives. Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton with George Washington According to the views of the third president of the United States, the liberties of the individual extend not only to his life and property, but also to the right to express thoughts openly. The enlightenment of the people is at the heart of a free civil society. Therefore, every citizen was endowed with the rights of education. Jefferson favored the separation of state and church. Subsequently, the philosopher created his own interpretation of the New Testament, which for a century began to be given to presidents of the country. In the question of political structure, he advocated the advantage of the power of the states over the central government. The system of political views of Thomas was called Jeffersonian democracy, President of the United States. In 1797, Jefferson was elected Vice President of the United States, and in 1801, he became the third president of the country. In this position, the politician made a number of transformations. He organized a bipolar party system of Congress, reduced to the necessary minimum the army, navy, and the apparatus of government officials. He expanded the notion of the backbone of the state to four fundamental pillars of the economy, agrarians, merchants, light industry, and shipping. In doing so, the politician was often quoted as saying the institution of banks seemed to him more dangerous than an armed army. According to Jefferson, if ordinary Americans trusted banks to manage the issuance of currency, bankers would begin taking people's property until their children wake up homeless on land once conquered by their ancestors. In 1803, Louisiana became U.S. territory under a treaty of sale with France. The cost of the deal was estimated at $15 million. At the end of the second presidential term, Jefferson established diplomatic relations with the Russian Empire. In order to secure the U.S. from unforeseen expenses and protect the independence of the country, the president signed a decree to stop foreign trade during the war in Europe with Napoleon Bonaparte. This move proved to be a mistake and harmed America by temporarily reducing the nation's economic growth. In 1807, deputies representing the northern states of the country submitted a proposal to Congress to ban the slave trade. The president supported this decision, unlike the inhabitants of the southern part of the country. A year later, the compromise decision to ban the slave trade at the federal level was approved, but the government could dispose of slaves identified during the suppression of smugglers. Such actions did not eradicate the sale of slaves, but only reduced the volume of trade. Personal Life Jefferson's first and only wife was his third cousin, Martha Wales Skelton, whom the future politician married at the age of 29. She was born in the family of John and Martha Wales, a week after the birth of her mother died, received an excellent home education. She spoke several foreign languages, sang, read poetry, played the piano. Skelton was characterized by a lively character, kind heart, and attractive appearance. The bride at the time of her marriage to the politician was already widowed and raised a son. Her first husband died two years after the formalization of the relationship. Martha's second marriage was much more successful. The wife of the third president of the United States was not only a beauty and a good hostess, but also a great conversationalist for intellectual Thomas. The Jeffersons remained happy for ten years at the family estate of Monticello. During that time they had six children, four of whom died at an early age. The couple were left with two daughters, Martha, whom her parents affectionately called Patsy, and Mary. In 1782, barely having given birth to the last daughter, Martha died in the arms of her inconsolable husband. On his deathbed, Thomas swore to his wife that he would never marry again, and he kept his word. Nevertheless, in France, the U.S., Ambassador had an affair with Parisian Maria Cosway. Relations with a married lady later grew into a friendly correspondence, 
which Jefferson and Maria led until the last days of his life. On this events in the personal life of the politician did not end. In Paris originated another of his love relationships. Concubine Thomas became a young, dark-skinned slave girl, a Cordetronca Sally Hemings, Martha's half-sister by her father. The girl could have stayed in free Europe, but chose to return to the United States where, living in the house of Jefferson, gave birth to eight children. Rivals of the third president exposed the love affair between the aristocrat and the slave, to which the politician responded with silence. Death, death, arising from natural causes, the politician was 83 years old, caught the creator of the Declaration of Independence on July 4, 1826, on the 50th anniversary of the adoption of the founding document in the history of the United States. Jefferson was buried at Monticello. In 1923, the estate was transferred to the state, and today the mansion is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The personal library of the American president consisted of 6,000 books. He himself was the author of political essays. Famous is his book, Great America, The Secret Power of Power. Every day the politician corresponded with the best minds of modern times, sending up to 300 letters a day. After Jefferson's passing, his relatives passed on his legacy to the Library of Congress.